Hi, I'm Ned, and I make games. If you've worked with Unity's shader graph, you've likely used the blend node. However, did you know that it has 22 different modes? What do they do behind the scenes, and just how do they look in an actual shader? Keep watching to see what I found out. But first, a quick summary of the blend node. It's used to blend two colors together, creating a composite image or recoloring a texture. It takes in two colors and outputs a computed color based on the current mode. There's also an opacity argument, which interpolates between the base color and the computed color. This means that if opacity is zero, the base color is output, while if the opacity is one, the computed color is output. Each blend mode has a math formula behind it. When showing the math on screen, I'll refer to the base color as B and the blend color as D. Also, keep in mind that when doing math on a color, it's treated as a vector with red, green, and blue components. Each of these components range from 0 to 1, where 0, 0, 0 is black, and 1, 1, 1 is white. If you want to use any of these formulas in HLSL, it's pretty easy to port over. Finally, several of these formulas use the step function, which returns 0 if the second value is less than the first, and 1 otherwise. It works on each component individually, so this term would return 0, 1, 0, 1. These calls almost always check if a color is lighter or darker than neutral gray, which is 1 half, 1 half, 1 half. Okay, let's get started. The simplest and perhaps most commonly used blend mode is overwrite. This sets the computed color to the blend color, resulting in a simple lerp based on opacity. You can use this to easily implement alpha blending. The next few blend modes tend to darken the resulting image. Darken is the most strict, taking the minimum of each component. Multiply computes the product of the colors, which is always darker than both, since color components are clamped between 0 and 1. You can also use it to find the intersection of two masks. Then we have burn, sometimes called color burn. This mode increases contrast and saturation while generally removing highlights. Its cousin, Linear Burn, retains that harshness in dark colors while preserving midtones a bit more. To complement the darkening modes, there are several lightening modes. The first is Lighten, which computes the maximum value between each color's component. Green is another useful filter, which tints the base image, almost like viewing it through a colored glass pane. It behaves like a multiplication mode that lightens instead of darkens. Dodge is a lot like a reverse burn, this one's also commonly called Color Dodge. It decreases contrast and blows out highlights.
Linear Dodge, also known as Additive, adds the colors together, which really brightens the resulting image. It also works to find the union of two masks. This next group contains several more complex modes, and they all generally increase the contrast in the resulting image. Many try to simulate lighting environments and use the step function that I mentioned earlier. The first of these is overlay, which kind of looks like placing a colored plastic film over the base image. It does a good job preserving the base color, applying the multiply or scream formula depending on which side of neutral gray the base color falls. Soft light is similar, with a very intricate formula. Both colors show through, and even pure black doesn't disrupt the image too much. Hard light is mathematically identical to overlay, except that it uses the blend color as a deciding factor to choose between applying multiply or screen. Nevertheless, it looks a lot different. The blend color really sticks around. The vivid light mode has a similar effect, except with much higher contrast. It exaggerates an image, darkening dark colors and lightening light colors. Linear Light combines the linear burn and dodge modes, applying dodge when the base color is darker than neutral gray and burn otherwise. Linear Light Add Sub, short for Addition Subtraction, looks closer to a less extreme version of Vivid Light than it does to the normal Linear Light mode. Pin light once again combines filters based on how the blend color compares to neutral gray, this time using the lighten and darken modes. It tends to eliminate midtones. The last contrast mode is Hard Mix, which can only return fully saturated colors where each component is either 0 or 1. You might use it as a mask to pull out areas with certain colors. These final five modes tend to invert the base color, giving otherworldly results. They may be more helpful for image manipulation than any artistic endeavor. Difference subtracts base color from the blend color, so a white blend color will invert the base color.
Exclusion looks much the same, but it tries to bring out colors missing from both the base and the blend color. For instance, if they both have lots of blue and green, the resulting color will have lots of red. Negation is next on our list, which looks like a more exaggerated version of Exclusion. Subtract is the mirrored version of difference, subtracting the blend color from the base color. A white blend color always results in black. And finally, an interesting one, divide. Dark sections in the blend image will lighten the base image. So that's everything, but I have a few closing remarks to remember. First, the blend node does work with color's alpha channels, so if you're going to use transparency, be sure to handle it appropriately. Finally, do remember to play with the opacity argument. Even really harsh modes, like hard mix and negation, can look really nice when you lower the opacity. And that's it for this video. There's a wide variety of blend modes ready to go, so don't hesitate to try them out before spending valuable time on a custom-built solution. I'd like to look into cool uses of each of these individual blend modes, so if you have any ideas or examples, please let me know. I really want to thank all my patrons for helping make this video possible, and give a big shout out to David Crew, my next-gen patron. Thank you so much. If you would like to download the project files from this video, and more, consider joining my Patreon too. But if not, that's no problem. I'd appreciate it if you could like this video. It really helps out with YouTube's algorithm. And be sure to subscribe for more weekly game development tutorials. Thanks again for watching, and make games.